Well, let's return to Bangladesh, where authorities have been moving thousands of Rohingya refugees to the remote island of Basan Cha. Dr James Gomez is the regional director of the think tank The Asia Centre and joins me live from Singapore. Dr Gomez, why is the Bangladesh government arguing that the Rohingya need to be moved there? Well, the primary narrative that the government in Bangladesh uses is the one of national security. And there are several strands in which uh, they make the argument. Uh, first of all, they say there is conflict between the local communities and those who are in those camps. So that's one issue. Secondly, they also flag the issue of ARSA, uh, the nationalist uh, separatist uh, uh, military group that is coming into Cox Bazaar camps and also recruiting from them. And the third is really about crimes uh, such as human trafficking, gun smuggling and drugs. Drugs is a very widespread uh, problem that goes even from Cox Bazaar all the way to Dhaka. And they want to put a stop to it. Uh, further, uh, they, they say, uh, you know, when it becomes dark uh, in the camps, uh, it, it is no longer uh, under the control of uh, the Bangladesh government because the camp leaders, the Majis, uh, they take over. So this is uh, one of the primary reason, a national security one, that the Bangladesh government uh, uses as a key narrative. And what are humanitarian arguments against moving the refugees to this island? A principal argument that is still valid till today and was brought out very early uh, when Bashan uh, Shah was uh, um, identified uh, was uh, that the area is flood prone and because uh, of the soil, uh, the silt in which it's built from, it can be very precarious. Uh, uh, humanitarian workers, human rights workers also point to the prison like conditions on the island, the enclosed spaces um, within the camps. Uh, because we also need to keep in mind uh, the camp also has provisions, offices and spaces for development workers also to be placed there uh, if they wanted to provide you know, care and service uh, to those who might be uh, uh, placed in those camps. And that also uh, you know, places a severe restriction of movement. So this is one of the, uh, you know, both a human, humanitarian but also a human rights argument. The Bangladesh government has denied forcing the refugees to move, describing these allegations as baseless. Is there anything illegal about what Bangladesh is doing? I think first we have to recognise how Bangladesh government, uh, you know, sort of defines these people. Uh, if, we, if we talk about registered refugees, you know, it's only about 27,500 that Bangladesh, um, you know, officially has registered. Uh, these uh, uh, Rohingya uh, you know, uh, uh, people from Myanmar are, are, are simply, you know, labelled as displaced people from Myanmar. So they will fall more on uh, uh, local jurisdiction uh, uh, around which uh, they will have the uh, capacity to move, move them or uh, force them uh, because Bangladesh is not um, uh, signatory to the refugee um, uh, convention. But I think what is more important, and, and, and this is where we need more investigation, is <clears throat> there's emerging, um, um, you know, uh, narrative that um, there is a certain amount of fatigue that uh, some Rohingyas face in the current camp conditions in terms of sanitation and, you know, people per uh, square feet in terms of uh, space allocation. Therefore, they perhaps want to explore a possible relief uh, this is yet to be validated, that the camps may give in terms of uh, what locally is known as healthy toilets and less people to, uh, 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 per room uh, to sleep. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, that comes at a price, which means um, it will be heavily surveilled, which means um, there will be less chances of being uh, part of the drug trade and making money off it. And also, uh, this is not a place from which boats to Malaysia can take off. So, so um, you know, I think these are the dynamics that we are seeing at, at play and these are early days. Uh, we, we will have to see uh, what more comes out uh, over the course of next days and weeks. And Dr Gomez, what rights do the refugees have to refuse relocation? 
Well, they don't because first of all, uh, you know, Bangladesh is not a signatory to the convention and only 27,500 are deemed as refugees. Uh, these, uh, you know, uh, Rohingyas are simply known as displaced people from Myanmar. So they will fall back uh, on, on, on uh, you know, the Bangladesh state will fall back on national laws to justify this. Uh, we will have to, we have not seen out, outright resistance yet because there are conflicting reports um, that, you know, people are going willingly and there's some indication that there's, uh, you know, sort of living condition fatigue uh, in the camps. Uh, so uh, we, we need more investigation and spotlight uh, uh, to be really clear about, you know, uh, what is the nub of the issue there. Well, what is the refugee situation in Bangladesh at the moment? What are the challenges authorities and aid groups are facing there? Yeah, it's still very much uh, around, you know, concern about the conditions of the camp. Uh, because at the end of the day, uh, the, the, this, uh, you know, facility at uh, uh, Bashar Char is, um, only houses a very, very small portion of all, you know, uh, Rohingyas currently uh, interned in the shanty camps around Cox Bazaar. So uh, uh, what is problematic is this narrative of the government from a state security point of view, uh, by moving people over uh, to this new facility, uh, will not be effectively able to um, resolve these national security problems because 90% of the Rohingya will still be very much left in the general larger area of Cox Bazaar and they will continue to be a challenge both in terms of uh, you know the security uh, issues that have been outlined as well as uh, getting them you know uh, good access to health, sanitation, food, care and education uh, uh, for the young. And just finally, what other options are there? What would your recommendations be to solve this humanitarian crisis? Well, it's still we go back to the original plan, uh, which is to get Myanmar to uh, uh, accept uh, its nationals back, uh, give them due process, uh, give them the national registration card and citizenship. Uh, this is not happening. We've seen recently that... Um, uh, they were not able to participate in the uh, con uh, this recently concluded uh, elections in Myanmar. Uh, so you find there is a disconnect. Uh, the youths feel displaced. And because of that, they may turn to, you know, signing up uh, to a more armed approach vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, um, uh, generating uh, or speaking up for their own new homeland. And I think that's possibly, you know, some of the emerging tensions we need to look up for. Dr. James Gomez, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.